guys, what's up? Take a look at my uh, solder rework station. So I've had this thing for about, I mean, probably a year or two years, but I only use it like once or twice. And uh, now it won't even turn on, it just pops fuses. So it's a 862D plus ESD. I believe it's like one of those cheap uh, Amazon uh, solder stations. And as soon as I, I plug in power, it immediately blows a fuse. So that one's already popped, yeah, as you can see. You can see that so focus is in. But uh, yeah, I want to use this because I actually the soldering iron. I have other soldering guns. I actually have other heat guns, but for taking off like uh, surface mount components, you need that super fine tip right there. I have to do some uh, repairs on some other stuff I'm working on, and but I got to remove a surface mount chip. But I need my system digger to work, so I'm gonna take it apart and see if I can fix it. So we'll open this up and see what's inside it, and hopefully I can fix it. If not, it's not really expensive to buy a new one, but um, I wouldn't know if I'd, I'd want to buy another cheap one again, because it, like literally I probably used this twice, maybe three times, and then, you know, that was it. So, all right. All right, here's the cover off. So that's the fuse, it leads back. Looks like we have a transformer. And at least the board doesn't look super complicated. So, I'm actually going to be looking at these things right here, and I don't know exactly what they are yet, but uh, either I think they're either, either a transistor or a thing called like a, a I think it, it's a tri-resistor or a thi-resistor. Um, so I'm going to take the PCB off, take the board off, and uh, take a closer look at it. But I don't see any obvious blowing it right now, but what I'm, I'm, more con I'm concerned about these right here, so I'm going to look at these and... We're probably going to desolder them and um, test them individually. Alright. Yeah, this is kind of a nightmare to get out, but this video also helps me uh, in case I go back, I have to go back and look at this, uh, how I took this apart. Hopefully that should be the last thing I got to get there. Alright, this port is trying to be slow here so you can see it. Looking for obvious signs of uh, issues. I mean, the whole board looks pretty dirty, so, I mean, look at that, there's this, I don't know if that's, uh, exploded, it doesn't really look like, I mean, because the rest of the board is so freaking dirty that, I mean, it's just a dirty manufacturing environment, you know, so, I'm going to be testing these things here, I'm going to take these out, desolder them, and, uh, see if I can actually, I'm going to test those individually, I think these are the tracks, I'm gonna go to my uh, computer and see what these things actually are. I'm gonna look up the, uh, do a cross reference and see what these things are. So, all right, cool. Be back. All right, so I'm gonna focus on those triax. They're actually called triax. Um, yeah, I'm not an electronics repair person. You know, I do it for fun and as a hobby, but I don't do it for a living. Um, where's the other triac? The tracks start with a BT. That's one, and that's one right there. That's another track. So I'm going to take those off, desolder them, and uh, do some tests on them. See if they're good or bad. All right. So what this thing does is that the, uh, the 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 circuit runs on low voltage, but then the soldering iron and the heat gun run on 110. So it's there's a couple a couple of optocouplers to separate the circuits, but um, these little devices here. I think I've done a Another video with my 3D printer, the optocoupler I uh, had installed, and uh, but yeah, cool devices. It, it, it's designed to separate the circuits. All right, let's see out of those things. All right, so I took the triax off, and actually I learned more about what these triax actually do, and they're basically uh, the AC controller, like a it's basically a transistor. And if you apply voltage to the gate, it allows the uh, alternating current through the actual uh, device. It's got a little solder ball on the resistor, if you can see right there. All right, so I went to the local store, Marvac. I'll grab real quick, but uh, I got a new, uh, actually a little bit higher amperage. And so this triac actually controls the uh, soldering iron. This triac controls the uh, heat gunner here. 
So this is actually, this original was a 16 amp track. That was an 8 amp, eight amp track, so. I, I suspected this one was bad. I did a couple of tests. I, I saw a line how to test it. And it seemed like it wasn't working right. So I got a 20 amp. All I had was a 20 amp replacement, but I'll, I'll grab it real fast. So, um, all right. All right, so that's my replacement right there, the NTE part number right there. This was definitely a lot more expensive than the STE or ST. This thing was like seven bucks. And I got some more fuses and, but yeah, these are like online, like lit, like 50 cents each. All right, got the tracks on, put some thermal paste on there. And just gonna double check everything one last time and then put it back on there and do a test. So I'm gonna test the, uh, the, uh, the blower fan, the, what it's called, the heat gun first. And then, uh, see what happens. So I actually got some fuses, but I got a little bit higher A rated. So the reason we're 6 amp, I'm gonna go to 8 amp. Uh, I have no clue what's gonna happen right now. So before it would just pop the fuse. And like I would never see anything on the screen, but where is the AC? So we're gonna try to keep my camera on this while I plug it in. I have my glasses on so it does pop. I'll stay back a little bit. <laughs> I guess I have no clue what's going to happen here. Alright, let's go. Okay. I heard someone in the gun. Did you hear that noise? That was odd. i plug it again. I heard someone popping like in this thing. Oh yeah, that's hot. Yeah, why is the gun... Yeah, this thing shouldn't be hot right now. Like, this thing's off, so... There shouldn't be anything going on right there. So I hope I didn't just pop my track again. That is, I'm just curious to see what the fuse looks like. Okay, I'll do that. Plug in again. And uh, I actually have the, uh, the gun kind of this wire from the board. A few different spots. Hopefully that'll be, uh, turn power off. Let's see. Um, let's see. Oh, I didn't know if that was going to do anything. Okay. So let's see if this thing heats up. I'll put this on a uh, hot air. I'm going to put that on a max. Okay. Let's see if this thing goes to 480. Well, at least see if the soldering iron works. Then, if it does, then I'll know. I'll start focusing on this other circuit. I might even take this apart to see if this thing's okay. Definitely hot. Okay, cool. All right, so we know that works. So now I'm going to focus all my attention on this hot air side. All right. Okay, interesting. A blower fan. I'm going to take that board off and see what's underneath it. Just want to make sure there's nothing going on here. works. So right now I have the fans work connected down below. That works. So yeah, I took this off. What's cool is that it's printed on the board, so it's telling me where I can follow the wires down and see what they what they do. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. It looks like you have two different sensors here. You have a like a, a sensor here, which is called the handle sensor, and then you have another sensor that goes into here that, that detects the how hot this thing is. Um, and the power is the 
the yellow, red, black. All right, I'm gonna get a closer look at this, but now I, since I can see the, the wire, at least I can, I can trace them back to here, I can map these wire colors and see what they actually are and where they're going. All right, so I trace everything back. This is actually providing the hot to this. So if I trace these back where it says hot, hot. I'm surprised the wires are so thin here. So it looks like I can't tell if it brings a double. It's bringing twice the amount of, like that's your ground, yellow. And the yellow is obviously grounded here down here to the to the body and this should be providing the power and then comes back up the gray into the switch but what's weird is I wonder what the blue one the thicker one well, not the thicker one but the uh, it just seems like that's such thin wire to be actually powering this thing um, but it, it, I actually I do have it unplugged so let's get our shot here and see what happens so the only difference is now I just have the sensor wires connected fan and sensor See if the soldering iron turns on. Yep, that's the power. So now we're getting some actual sensor readings. But I'm trying to think, I might get my multimeter on there and figure out. I mean, the way it, it's wired is, doesn't seem right to me. But um, you have it like this, you know what I mean? It seems like it would almost be giving it a current as soon as you plug it in. Yeah, it's funny. I've only had this thing for, I can only use it three times. I've had a already fixing it. It's crazy. Yeah, I don't know if I burned this thing out or what, but it's not getting hot anymore. But look at this. So that's actually the wires that feed the heating element. They're actually sending 110, 120 volts over those two little tiny wires. They come back under there, but look at that. Right there. This thing's not going to power it on. That's on. And I already have voltage up here. That should be, I think I might have burnt this out. That was that noise you heard when I first fired it up. Zzz. But uh, that is freaking weird. You know, I went back to my videos to see how I took it apart. And, um, you know, it, it's stuck on. So either this thing is fried, the, the new thing I put in there. Um, it's stuck on. The thing is fried and stuck on, which is sending AC voltage, but I, I need to look at the circuit again because it's... That is weird, weird, weird. Um, like, it's powered on as soon as you plug it in. Like, watch this. I unplug it. Yeah, that's seriously bad. Alright. You guys can see that. Okay, so... That is the gate. This circuit right here, the gate, this is actually what turned, this is on the, uh, what's it called, the uh, tr track. The gate controls these two circuits right here. And actually that's what provides the 110 voltage up to that heating gun. But I'm trying to figure out, why the hell is this thing powered on? Why, why am I getting 120 volts as soon as I power this thing on? So I'm thinking, I, I gotta check the switch here too. This switch right here. I mean, I already tested it with my multimeter. You know? Just odd. Okay, um, yeah, because I shouldn't even get 120. Even with the switch off, I shouldn't be getting 120 volts. So, that's weird, weird circuit design. Okay, so maybe the hot and neutral are backwards. I don't know, I gotta figure it out. Alright. Alright, I suspect there's double. I know there's a short in there. And the, one of the wires lead broke off. Um, so there's something, something going on there, but I took off the ground lead, so I'm no longer getting the uh, 120 volts. But this what happens when I hit that power switch. Power's on. Yep, and 120. That's what I should be getting. Alright guys, take a look. I think this is the original cause of this thing, so my, the lead already came off. Like, it's really not worth fixing at this point, I don't think. I mean, I guess I, I could try to get this heat tape or whatever but see those quills right there I think those are that's what was grounding out and giving this thing 120 volts when I shouldn't have had 120 volts so yeah take a look at that it went through and the quills were actually touching the side that the wall this wall and grounding this thing out so
<laughs> All right, so I think I figured it out. All right, I tried to do a little experiment here. I tried to retouch the wires. I mean, obviously I can never use this again. You know, it went through and ground it out, but I wrapped the coil back around there, if you can see it. I don't know what's gonna happen right now. <laughs> pop, pop, let's go. All right, so I do have my multimeter. Oh, there we go. Whoa. All right, that was crazy. Yeah, I had to turn the camera off because I kind of got scared. This thing actually caught on fire and exploded. Pop, you can just see the coil right there. Just basically turn it on. Let's look at that. Um, I guess I could try the experiment again if I wanted to. I wanted to reconnect those again, but um, at this point, you know, I just don't know if it's actually worth putting more money into it if I have to buy uh, one of these. So originally, I was trying to save space. That's why I wanted the the, the multi. You know, actually had both in one unit. But I think. Um, if I had to buy another, I'm gonna see what these cost, but um, to me, it's I have to. If I had to buy another one, then I'm gonna probably just buy like the, the hot air station by itself and kind of separate the unit. So if one burns out, it doesn't burn out the whole device. I can just replace the individual device. So um, I, I think it, the the core problem originally, obviously, was a short. I think in this uh, this device right here, you know. So. Hey anyway, I spent twelve dollars on that device, the little uh, track. I mean, this one did. This one didn't test right. So, from the test I actually did on it, so I don't know if it's good or bad, but do some more tests on it. Um, might keep the circuit board for spare parts in the future. The optocouplers, maybe. But um, okay, cool. So, all right, guys. I mean, having fun, man. All right, at least I tried. Let's see what's up.